Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's the one, the only, Darius Seth. Now, thank you so much for joining me for our latest edition of the Cleveland Sports Show. You're probably wondering, Darius, why are you playing that rock music that I hear in the background? Well, it's celebration music for us today because we have a very special day to celebrate. No, it is not my birthday, but it is the 100th episode of the Cleveland Sports Show. That is correct. This is officially the 100th episode. Uh, we had a little bit of a mix-up last week. We actually counted one of the episodes twice. So in this case, this is it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is officially the show where we have the Cleveland Sports Show tracks go to their one uh, triple digits now. The 100th episode of the Cleveland Sports Show is here. And what a better way to celebrate. We've got some celebratory music going on in the background. And we're going to have some Cleveland sports to talk about, too. Of course, Cavs are still going strong into their season. The first half of their season's already over. It's actually kind of hard to believe. They're heading into the All-Star break. We'll talk about their most recent slate of games. We'll get you updated with what's going on and what to expect for All-Star weekend in Atlanta this weekend in the NBA. Also, we'll talk about the Indians and how their spring training has been going so far in Arizona. And speaking of Arizona, we're going to stay there as we talk about J.J. Watt going to the Cardinals and how that might impact the NFC West. The, uh, that is the uh, conference that the, uh, that the Arizona Cardinals play in. We'll also get you your sports fact of the day. It's all coming up next right here on the Cleveland Sports Show. But first... Here it is, the intro, for the 100th episode of the Cleveland Sports Show. Hello everyone, welcome to our latest edition of the Cleveland Sports Show, officially episode number 100. Before I move on to the sports fact of the day, because this is our 100th episode, I would like to send a special thanks um, to Julie and Maria D'Aloiso for uh, all getting these podcasts posted on the NordoniaHills.News website. Uh, I've been doing this for the last almost what, what, three years now almost, and it is, every episode has just been a complete joy. I've really enjoyed working with Julie these last, uh, these last few years, and looking forward to these next couple of months, and doing some more podcasts, and really, uh, you know, from Brady Hamilton, to guys like Andrew Thompson, who've joined me in the past, uh, special thanks to those gentlemen as well. Logan, unfortunately, will not be able to join us in this week's episode, however, he will be with us in the future. So you've just got me today. We're going to talk about some Cavs. Uh, it's all-star game, LeBron versus Durant. We're also going to get into the Indians, uh, talk about how they've been doing in their first few set of spring training games. Also, Arizona Cardinals have uh, won the J.J. Watt sweepstakes as J.J. Watt is heading to the Cardinals. First, let's get you your sports fact of the day. And because we're, we always bring the Cavs up first in our in our discussions each week. We're now going to talk about the Cavs and what they did a couple of years ago. Actually, today is March 5th, 2021. And this day, just three years ago, Cavs had a regular season matchup against the Detroit Pistons. Uh, the game was played in Cleveland. The Cavs at that time were 37, or excuse me, were 36 and 26. Uh, the new team, Jordan Clarkson, Larry Nance Jr., Rodney Hood, George Hill had just uh, come to the team. Uh, Chetty Osman was a rookie. LeBron James was in his final season with the Cavs. And the Cavs got a big win over Detroit, a 112-90 victory over their Central Division rivals. 
LeBron James finished with 31 points, 7 rebounds, and 7 assists, all in just 29 minutes. Larry Nance Jr. with a big night as well that night. Uh, Nance Jr. would put up 22 points and 15 rebounds, get that double-double. He also finished with an assist and led the Cavs in minutes that night in 32 total minutes played. Kyle Korver had 11 points and 6 rebounds. Chetty Osman, 12 points and 6 rebounds. Uh, and uh, Jordan Clarkson also with 11 points to go along with two assists and six rebounds all in 20 minutes. So Cavs get their 37th win of the 2017-18 season on this day three years ago, March 5th, 2018. Man, seems like an eternity ago. You know, what's crazy is I wasn't even doing the Cleveland Sports Show in March of 2018. It actually started in May. It's kind of crazy to think how far... Uh, life has really, how fast life has uh, come at us. But it is time to talk some Premier League soccer. We'll get you updates on that right now on the Soccer League that in England. Let's get you updated on the standings, fans. So Manchester City in first place in the Premier League right now by a comfortable margin. They uh, have 65 points on the season thus far we have 20 wins with five draws and five draws and two losses sorry I, I thought uh i was pronouncing draws and losses at the same time you can't really do that so five draws two losses for manchester city right now manchester united only uh 14 points behind them that's right 14 points and with they have 51 points does manchester united with 14 wins nine draws, and four losses. That 14-point gap, ladies and gentlemen, is the widest uh, margin that one team has over another in the Premier League standings thus far. Once you get to that two uh, second and third seedings, it's very, very competitive. So as of right now, it's pretty much a battle for um, for second place. Right now, Manchester United in second place with 51 points, but a point behind them is Leicester City. Leicester City with 15 wins, Five draws, seven losses for a combined 50 points. Uh, Chelsea comes in at fourth place with 13 wins, eight draws, six losses for a total of 47 points. And in fifth place, we have Everton. They have 14 wins, four draws, and eight losses for a combined total of 46 points. So in terms, uh, in the difference of the second seed and the fifth seed right now in the Premier League, it's only by five points points, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very competitive right now. Uh, aside from that 1-2 uh, gap, that's a 14-point gap. Looks like Manchester City will most likely run away with the Premier League this year. And if we look at our stats, Mohamed Salah of Liverpool, the top goal scorer so far in the Premier League, the Liverpool striker with 17 goals on the season. Bruno Fernandes of Manchester United comes in with 15 goals. Harry Kane of Tottenham Hotspur with 14 goals. He's in third place. And tied for fourth place include Dominic Calvert-Lewin of Everton, Patrick Bamford of Leeds United, and Sun Huing Ming of Tottenham Hotspur. And Harry Kane is finally tied with Kevin De Bruyne for assists in the Premier League. Uh, De Bruyne caught up to Harry Kane um, in these last few games. So each of those two players are tied for first right now, each of them with 11 assists on the season. Bruno Fernandez and Jack Grealish tie for second. They each have 10 assists as well. In terms of matches, we are looking at match day um, 27, which will take place uh, tomorrow, starting uh, starting this weekend. It will be at 7.30 a.m. Burnley will be going up against Arsenal. Sheffield United taking on Southampton at 10 a.m. tomorrow. At 12.30 p.m., we have Aston Villa taking on the Wolves. Tomorrow at 3 p.m., Brighton going up against Leicester City. And then Sunday, March 7th at 7 a.m., West Brom will be taking on uh, Newcastle. Liverpool going up against Fulham. Manchester City versus Manchester United. Ladies and gentlemen, mark your calendars for that one. That is the Manchester Derby, Sunday, March 7th at 11.30 p.m. Going to be an awesome game for sure. The top two seats in the Premier League. You're not going to want to miss that one. Tottenham Hotspur taking on Crystal Palace at 2.15 p.m. on Sunday. At 1 p.m. on March 8th on Monday, Chelsea going up against Everton and then West Ham going up against Leeds United on Monday, March 8th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. 
And, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into Cavs basketball. We're moving on from the Premier League. We'll keep you updated with what's going on in England next week uh, as well. Now time to move on to the Cavs, where we talked about them. They had that win against the Pistons three years ago. And, man, it felt good for a little bit to see the Cavs have a few wins under their belt. The last time we spoke, the uh, the Cavs had their most recent win, uh, their most recent game, and their most recent win against the Houston Rockets, a 112-96 to victory. That was their second win in a row. And guess what? The winning just kept going. And it happened against the Philadelphia 76ers. That's right. After that win against Houston, uh, last Wednesday, Cavs went to Philadelphia on the road last Saturday for a matchup with Joel Embiid and the Philadelphia 76ers, who are currently the first seed in the East. And the Cavs uh, came up, they just uh, kept grinding and came up with the win in overtime. Isaac Okoro, with one of his better games of the season, 15 points, 8 rebounds, and 3 assists, all in 34 minutes. Jared Allen with 14 points in 36 minutes. Colin Sexton played 44 minutes and had but had 28 points, 5 rebounds, and 3 assists. Darius Garland was sensational uh, last Saturday against the 76ers. Garland would finish in 42 minutes of play with 9 assists and 2 rebounds. Oh, but guess what? He also dropped 25 points. Colin Sexton and Darius Garland combined uh, for 86 total minutes. Sexton had 44, Darius Garland with 42 minutes. Those were the top two uh, highest played uh, um, players who played the most minutes in Saturday's matchup with the Philadelphia 76ers. If we look at stats here, Cavs did have 16 turnovers, but Philly had 18, so really canceled out in the turnover department. Cleveland with 62 points in the paint compared to Philly's 42. That was a stat I was very, very surprised with. 62 points. Uh, You know, I thought the 76ers with their paint dominance with Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons and Tobias Harris and all these big guys, uh, you know, I thought that Philly would win the points in the paint battle. However, that was not the case. 62 points for the Cavs compared to just 42 in the paint for Philly. And offensive rebounds. Cavs with 13 big offensive rebounds in Saturday's matchup. They also had 24 assists and 11 team steals. So this was a fantastic win for the Cavs. They outscored the 76ers by three in overtime to give them a three-point win. 112 to 109 was the final score in favor of the Cavs. That was a big-time win for Cleveland. And also... Cavs kept that momentum up. Now, Philadelphia to Houston, I don't have Google Maps in front of me, but I do know that is a pretty long distance between those two cities, even when flying, believe it or not. I've actually flown to Houston from Pittsburgh, and it's a three-hour flight. You get that jet lag. It's it's definitely not a, it's not pretty, but the Cavs had to fly, uh, had to to, uh, sleep through that flight. They head to Houston for another matchup with the Rockets. Uh, These teams had just seen each other, what, five days ago in Cleveland. Now they were seeing each other at the Toyota Center in Houston. Guess what? Cavs' momentum train just kept on rolling at the Toyota Center. I should say because it was at the Toyota Center, they kept that they didn't put the let their foot off the gas pedal of the Toyota car, and they came into the Toyota Center this past Monday and beat John Wall and the Houston Rockets, who have just been uh, straight up. They've just been struggling, ladies and gentlemen. The Rockets, um, heading into the All-Star break, have lost 13, yes, 13 straight games. This is with John Wall and um, and Victor Oladipo. Now, yes, there's uh, their paint-dominant player, their center star, Christian Wood, he, prom- very, very promising young player, um, has missed multiple games. But with guys like P.J. Tucker, Sterling Brown, uh, John Wall, Victor Oladipo, I am very, very shocked at uh, just how poor this Rockets team has been playing over these last few weeks. But the Cavs, once again, great overall performances, especially from Colin Sexton. 39 points for Sexton um, in this game against Houston in 42 minutes to go along with eight assists and three rebounds. Darius Garland did play 30 minutes, was not um, uh, did not score as many points as he did against Philly. Only 14 in the matchup with Houston to go along with seven assists. 
Garland uh, finished second in terms of, in the assist category for the Cavs in Monday's win against the Rockets, um, only finishing below Colin Sexton, who had eight assists, Garland with seven assists in the game against the uh, the Houston Rockets. If we look on Houston's side, uh, no one scored over 25 except John Wall. Victor Oladipo finished second in scoring with uh, 20 points, but a third of Houston's points came from John Wall, and I was not expecting that. Now, I did expect John Wall to, you know, contribute scoring because I do know that John Wall is a quality basketball player, but I mean, Victor Oladipo, I mean, in 41 points, only 41 minutes, only 20 points. I need a little more than that, to be quite honest with you. P.J. Tucker can't have seven points. You know, P.J. Tucker is going to be a vocal point offensively now. He uh, has to be able to score more points, essentially. Um, I really like this guy, Jay Sean Tate, who's actually um, an alumni of Ohio State. I I learned that last week at the Cavs game when uh, the announcer announced uh, Jay Sean Tate's name. So that was awesome to see. But I definitely think this is a guy who can really contribute scoring wise. He's got to have to step up the have to step up in terms of the numbers. Only five points for Jay Sean Tate in the loss against the Cavs on Monday. Ben McLemore. Um, this is a guy who I'm also am uh very happy is on the Rockets because he is a three point machine. Only problem is the machine hasn't been working that much um these last few weeks. McLemore in only in twelve minutes five points. Uh, you know, this is a guy who I think is a great, reliable, he's a reliable three-point shooter to me, and I just can't see him having five points going forward and the Rockets being able to win games. He's going to be a critical factor coming off Houston's bench for Steven Silas as well. But Cavs come out with the Monday night victory in Houston, 101-90 to the score in that game. Now, Cavs had one more game before the All-Star break, and it was this past Wednesday against the Indiana Pacers. Uh, this Karis LeVert did not play, um, still dealing with um, a med- uh, some medical conditions, so uh, has not um, suited up for the Pacers yet, but um, it is, he is going to be worth the wait, I promise. He is, just, he is just a sensational scorer and has so many creative ways to score on the offensive side of the ball. But let's look at this Indiana Pacers-Cavs game. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm not kidding you. This was one of the worst uh, performances I've seen from the Cavs all season long. And you're probably thinking, you're looking at, you might be looking at the score. And if I tell you the score, 114-111, Cavs lost. And most of you probably knew that uh, before this, uh, heading into this podcast episode. Now you're probably wondering, Darius... Cavs only lost by three. Why why are you saying this is one of the worst losses of the season? Because they were up, ladies and gentlemen, if I'm not mistaken, by as many as, I don't know, 17, almost 20. And this game was tied after 28. Cavs didn't have a great court. They don't know. They didn't end the first quarter well. But they had that they ended the half very well. Um a 33 to 23 second quarter score in favor of the Cavs. But then They just let the Pacers crawl right back into this game. And here's the number that bothers me, ladies and gentlemen. Um, 11 turnovers for Indiana. Now, you know, maybe 10 to 13 turnovers is kind of the number you want to be at in terms of having those turnovers for an average NBA team. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm serious here. Cavs had 25 turnovers in this game against the Pacers. 25 Just think about that, 25 times they coughed the ball up. And yes, this Indiana Pacers team was not the team it used to be. You know, Oladipo, a healthy Oladipo is not there anymore. Paul George is obviously not there. You know, but this is still a team that can put points on the board. You got guys, obviously, Malcolm Brogdon, DeMontis Sabonis, Justin Holiday, uh, you know, Aaron Holiday as well. TJ McConnell, who had a career night in steals, absolutely sensational. He had a triple-double in steals, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not kidding you. He was absolutely terrific. He also had 13 assists in Indiana's win against the Cavs. Malcolm Brogdon finished with 29 points in 35 minutes. I'm not frustrated that the Cavs are letting the Indiana scorers score. Yeah, that's going to happen. But the fact that you that there is no reason they should have they should have lost this game. Um I saw a Cavs team who basically were just turning the ball over, you know, basically at, at every possession, 
You know, I was, you know, I, every time I would look at my TV, the Cavs were turning it over and India, Indiana was converting on a fast, uh, fast break. There's no excuse for that whatsoever. If the Cavs had cut that 25 turnovers to, let's say, even 19, I guarantee you they walk out of Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse with a win. This, to me, was just an unacceptable loss, and this is not the way you want to head into the All-Star break. A game you lost by three because it was basically your fault. The Cavs only can blame themselves after this loss to the Indiana Pacers, and you have to credit the Pacers. This is a team who has a chip on their shoulder. Um, Nate Bjorkren has done a, a fairly decent job in his first year as head coach of the Pacers. Um, these guys, as I mentioned, Brogdon, Sabonis, uh, Holl- the two Holiday brothers, uh, Justin Holiday and Aaron Holiday. All these got Jeremy Lamb. The, all these guys have chips on their shoulders, and they are not afraid to compete. And look at what T.J. McConnell did on the defensive end on Wednesday night. So the Cavs really needed this win, especially after that horrendous West Coast trip they had. Um, but unfortunately, they fall to the Indiana Pacers in this one. One fourteen to one eleven was the final score. Now, ladies and gentlemen, upcoming schedule for the Cleveland Cavaliers. So All-Star break is finally upon us. We will not have games in the NBA until Thursday, March 11th, will be the first day back of games coming. And But the Cavs don't play till the next night. Friday, March 12th, will be the first Cavs game uh, after the All-Star break, be the first game um, of their second half of the season and the Cavs will be down south in the United States to start their uh to start their second half. They'll begin at uh at the Smoothie King Center in New Orleans, Louisiana. The Cavs will play Zion Williamson, Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball and the New Orleans Pelicans and that should definitely be a fun matchup. We've got a lot of young talent on display in that game. Obviously, we have Sexton, we have Garland, we have Zion Williamson, and I love Brandon Ingram's game. He has taken his game to the next level, and he has, you know, he was deserving of that Most Improved Player Award last year. Absolutely sensational, so that's going to be a great game next Friday at 8 p.m. Cavs then head to Atlanta, Georgia for a matchup with the Hawks. Um, this, will, this will be Sunday, March 14th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Trey Young and company will be waiting. Cavaliers will then head back uh, down south to Miami and South Beach for a matchup with the Heat. That will conclude their three-game road trip. That matchup against Miami is going to be Tuesday, March 16th at 8 p.m., uh, Cavs then will head back home to Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse for a four-game homestand, which will include matchups against the Celtics, Spurs, Raptors, and Kings before they head back out uh, for, an- for another West Coast trip, which will include matchups against the Lakers and Kings. But Logan and I will get into, uh, we'll dissect those matchups for you uh, next week, uh, to give you um, an analysis of what the Cavs can do to have success because they're going to be playing some playoff caliber teams, teams like the Heat, the Celtics, the the Raptors, who have really started to emerge again, the Lakers, obviously, the, you know, the Kings are going to compete. The Kings are no joke. You know, uh, they are a team that is going to compete, especially now with De'Aaron Fox and Tyrese Halliburton. This is a team I really um, enjoy seeing when I have the chance. So we'll see if the Cavs are up to the challenge. But as of right now, you have a break from the Cavs for uh, for a week. So all you Cavs fans, you know, maybe you know, it's time to watch some Netflix, uh, maybe some something else, watch some Premier League if, uh, if that's something you might be into. But not till next Friday, March 12th at 8 p.m. is when the Cavs resume their season. It'll be in New Orleans against the Pelicans and Zion Williamson. That should be an awesome matchup featuring so much young talent. Now, let's get into the all-star game for this weekend, which will be taking place in Atlanta, Georgia. Team LeBron versus Team Durant, uh, the two superstars uh, giving uh, doing the draft last night, each of them drafting their players. So here's how it will pan out. Team LeBron will come out with the starting lineup of, obviously, LeBron James, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Stephen Curry, Luka Doncic, and Nikola Jokic. Now, Team Durant... Uh, has their starting five ready to go as well. Now, Kevin Durant has been injured for the last few weeks, so he will not be playing 
in the game. Therefore, the starting lineup for Team Durant will be Bradley Beal, who's had a sensational season with the Wizards, Joel Embiid, Kyrie Irving, Kawhi Leonard, and Jason Tatum. So, hey, Kyrie Irving and Jason Tatum um, will be back on the court playing for the same team. So that should be an uh, that should, that'll be an interesting storyline. All additional All Stars who will be coming off the bench for Team LeBron include Jalen Brown, who is a, a deserved All Star this year. He's been sensational for the Celtics. Paul George, Rudy Gobert, Damian Lillard, who I I thought should have been a starter. But I'm just glad that he's once again on the All-Star team. Obviously, Dame Time deserve it of this award. Chris Paul, who's led the Suns to a terrific season. DeMontis Sabonis and Ben Simmons all uh, will be reserves for Team LeBron. Reserves for Team Durant, Devin Booker, another son who is really um, once again showing us how great of a scorer he is. And once again, but now his team is actually winning games. And that's thanks to the help of Chris Paul. Devin Booker is on the all-star team for Team Durant. Uh, James Harden, who has had a terrific season with uh, primarily with the Nets, has really shown how great of a floor general he can be. Returned to Houston this past Wednesday, uh, where the Nets faced the Rockets, and uh, Nets blew Houston out of the building, and that was without Kevin Durant. But James Harden, as I mentioned, will be there. Zach Levine of the Chicago Bulls, uh, the promising young bull um, with, uh, I know that's Colin Sexton's nickname, but the promising Zach Levine of the pro- the surging Chicago Bulls. So I think we're going to see, have a playoff spot in the next couple of years. He's going to be on Team Durant as a reserve. Donovan Mitchell of the Utah Jazz, leading Utah to the best record in the NBA thus far. Uh, will be a reserve as well. Julius Randle, the New York Knicks, Nikola Vucevic of the Orlando Magic, and then Zion Williamson also will be a reserve for Team Durant. The 2021 NBA All-Star Game is Sunday, March 7th. Game time is at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, of course, and it will be on TNT. Now, the All-Star Weekend is going to look a little bit different here, obviously, now with uh, concerns of the coronavirus. So here is how the game, here's how the weekend is going to work. So I mentioned how we're going to have the obviously the All-Star game at 8 p.m. Now March 7th at 5 p.m. is when TNT will officially begin uh, coverage of All-Star weekend. And it's going to begin at 5 p.m. the Taco Bell Skills Challenge. Um, that's So Ernie and the crew are going to talk for a little bit. Then we'll have the Taco Bell Skills Challenge and the Mountain Dew 3-Point Contest. That'll all be starting at 6.30 p.m. So coverage will start at 5. 6.30 is officially when we have the Skills Challenge and the 3-Point Contest taking place. So that's kind of like your uh, all-star Saturday night. And then during halftime of the uh, of the all-star game is when the dunk contest is going to take place. Now NBA the All-Star Weekend 2021 is going to reach 200 is it's going to reach fans in 215 countries and territories in more than 50 languages. And this is going to be a tremendous tremendous um weekend for NBA basketball. Um Team LeBron and we all know this that uh, now the teams which I love are now going to be donating to HBCUs and Team LeBron is going to uh, play for the Third Good Marshall College Fund. And then Team Durant will play for the United Negro College Fund. I think it's amazing how these uh, teams now in the All-Star game um, are, are playing for something bigger than basketball. And it's just awesome to see. We saw last year in Chicago how um, both the teams were supporting Chicago-based organizations and helping school kids. And last year's All-Star Game was a terrific success, and we saw how competitive it was. And hopefully we'll see the same this year in Atlanta. The All-Star Originally, the All-Star Game this year was supposed to be in Indianapolis, but obviously with all the concerns uh, with COVID-19, Commissioner Adam Silver decided it would be best to move the All-Star Game down to Atlanta. And that concludes our NBA news, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, As I mentioned, it's really all-star time now in the NBA. We're all getting focused on that. So 
5 p.m. is when coverage begins. 6.30 is when we actually have the basketball start. It will be um, the Mountain Dew three-point contest, the Taco Bell skills challenge. 8 p.m. All-Star game starts, and at halftime of the All-Star game is when we will have our beloved dunk contest. We'll see who comes out on top this weekend in all of our competitions at NBA All-Star Weekend. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the Cleveland Indians. It's finally time. I know Logan and I were, you know, kind of dissecting what we can expect from the Indians this year as they head into spring training and especially into their regular season. So from Goodyear, Arizona, the Indians have had a pretty successful uh, spring training uh, session so far. In their first game on this past Sunday, Indians smoked the Cincinnati Reds by a final score of 5-1. to one. Uh, Royals defeated the Indians on Monday, final score of that one 8-6. to six. Uh, But then the Indians uh, destroyed Se- the Seattle Mariners, a 6-1 to one victory for Cleveland. So they've been able to get their runs on the board. The Diamondbacks defeated the Indians um, this past Wednesday. Uh, nine to four, the final score, and then but yesterday the Indians bounced back yet again for a five-one win over the Milwaukee Brewers. Indians put up three runs alone in the second inning. Three nothing was our score after the second inning. Um, Indians then were uh, put on runs, put on a run in the fourth inning, and then in the sixth inning as well. So after six innings, Cleveland had a five nothing lead over Milwaukee. Brewers did score a run in the seventh inning, but it was all a little too late as the Indians took the victory. And right now, actually, Indians in another spring training game. Right now, it's midway through the second live. Uh, Chicago Cubs are down, or excuse me, Chicago Cubs are defeating the Cleveland Indians two to nothing right now. Chicago has scored a run in each inning. So right now, we are midway through the second inning. Chicago 2, Cleveland nothing. So Indians have, uh, you know, they've, it's, the scoring hasn't been an issue. It's really that consistently consistency defensively. You give up one run against the Reds, but then you give up eight against the Royals. We'll see how, you know, this is obviously spring training, so it's great to, you know, for Terry Francona to get uh, different guys, you know, put them in different positions, see what works best. And I'm really uh, looking forward to what the Indians will have to offer um, at the beginning of next month. Don't forget, April 1st, 1.10 p.m., it's officially time to bring in a new season of Indians baseball. April 1st will be the first regular season game for the Indians. They will be in Detroit facing off against the Tigers. Um, That'll be the first of three games the Indians will have in Detroit. So upcoming spring training schedule for the Cleveland Indians. Tomorrow they'll be playing against the White Sox. Um, On Sunday they'll be going up against the Oakland Athletics. And then um, on Monday they'll be going up against the Seattle Mariners. And Tuesday, March 9th, Indians will be facing off against the Texas Rangers. So uh, two Chicago teams for the Indians in these next coming uh, games. Indians, as of right now, in the middle of a game against the Cubs. They are down two to nothing. We're midway through the second in that one. It's finally time to talk about J.J. Watt, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. J.J. Watt, we were, I was wondering for a few days, where is he going to go? I know Browns fans, you know, he was on our list. It, unfortunately, that list was only a dream because J.J. Watt has signed with the Arizona Cardinals. And a lot of eyebrows raised, um, you know, with with this decision. But hey, you know, when you look at this Cardinals roster, you've got a developing quarterback in Kyler Murray. Obviously, J.J. Watt will be hooking up with one of his older teammates, DeAndre Hopkins from Houston. You have guys like Larry Fitzgerald Jr., a wide receiver, um, Kenyon Drake with the, as running back. So, you know, this is clearly going to be a very, very rough um, uh, division for the Cardinals to compete in, but I certainly think that they can compete in the NFC West. Now, San Francisco, Jimmy Garoppolo will be coming back. You have the LA Rams who finished 10-6 and um, this past season. The Seahawks from Russell Wilson and company finished 12-4. You know, so this is going to be a very competitive 
um, conference or division for the Arizona Cardinals. Now, Arizona finished 8-8 eight and eight last year, 8 wins, 8 losses for the Cardinals. They were 4-4 four and four at home, 4-4 four and four, um, on the road, and they ended the season losing their last two games. It's I'm going to be very interested to see not only how the Cardinals play in their own division, the NFC West, which so many people have um, categorized as the hardest division in the entire NFL, but upcoming opponents, now that we don't have the dates yet, but the upcoming opponents this year for the, uh, for the Arizona Cardinals um, includes Green Bay, Minnesota, Indianapolis, Carolina, and Indianapolis, Just the Colts just got uh, Carson Wentz, so we'll see how he fits in with that new system. Um, but they'll also be playing the Detroit Lions, the Chicago Bears, uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars, who will most likely have Trevor Lawrence, I would assume. They'll be going up against the Dallas Cowboys with Dak Prescott back. You know, that's, um, you know, that's going to be a competitive matchup. They'll also be going up against Tennessee uh, and Derrick Henry, it, you know, that's that that's also going to be um, a tough outing for Arizona. So they're, they're definitely going to be competing. The question is, can they get those results? But if you look at J.J. Watt's stats, I mean, this is a guy you love to have on your team. This past season, uh, J.J. Watt had a total of 52 tackles, 16 assisted tackles. He averaged about five sacks uh, per game had one interception forced in terms of yards. He had uh, 19 yards gained by interceptions, and this year he uh, had one touchdown scored via an interception. This was all from 2020 with the Houston Texans. So this is going to be the first time that J.J. Watt um, is moving on from Houston. It's, uh, you know, we'll see if Deshaun Watson, his former Texan teammate, will also be leaving H-Town. James Harden left Houston a couple months ago. All the, all the stars now leaving Houston. You know, I heard Taylor Twelman on ESPN talking about it a couple of days ago. Um, you know, Astros have been dealing with that uh, cheating scandal in MLB, in the MLB, um, in the World Series that they had in 2017. So they've been having to deal with that. Um, all the, the mess that's going on with the Houston Texans right now with Deshaun Watson and uh, J.J. Watt leaving. So, you know, it's really a mess down there in Houston with the Texans. And then obviously the Rockets have lost 13 straight. So it's it must be really tough being a Houston sports fan. Um, but being a Cleveland fan, I think we can all have some uh, some empathy for them. You know, in fifth grade, my advisory class, I learned you have to be able to walk in their shoes to show empathy. And I think as Cleveland fans... Sports fans, we should do those Houston fans a favor by walking in their shoes and just understanding how it feels, um, the pain, the, the agony of what they're, they're probably going through right now because, you know, not one of the sports teams are any good right now. And it's, 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 it seems kind of frustrating for, it must be frustrating for those Houston sports fans. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes uh, our latest edition of the Cleveland Sports Show. I'm very much looking forward to this weekend and the NBA All-Star Game. Now, as I mentioned, uh, Logan Purcell could not join us this week, so you just had me, obviously. But Logan will be able to join us for future shows, so I'm very much looking forward to that. We're going to talk about the Cavs' second half of the season. We're also going to be analyzing more of the Premier League as well as uh, Indian Spring training and possibly any more NFL updates that might head our way. Now, you're probably wondering, Darius, how can I access more shows of this podcast? I love I love this show. It is amazing. Well, guess what? I have some good news for you. If you're on NordoniaHills.news, just make sure that you, um, that you go to the Contributors tab on NordoniaHills.news. You'll see my name. It's about the second or third one down. It's Darius Sethna, spelled D-A-R-A-Y-U-S, S-E-T-H-N-A. Once you click on my name, you'll be able to access all of my uh, all of my shows, um, my past shows of the Cleveland Sports Show. You'll see my broadcasts of Nordonia Knights Varsity Basketball on the boys team. You will also, if you keep scrolling down, see some of the written work I had a chance I had the chance to write over the summer, and I was able to do some writing work in the winter as well. I have an article on the Cavs that I posted from the end of December. I also have all my work posted on Twitter. 
If you're on Twitter, just type in my Twitter handle, which is at Nordonia Sports. You can also just type in my name, which is spelled D-A-R-A-Y-U-S-S-E-T-H-N-A. Additionally, you can access the Cleveland Sports Show on Spotify. Just type in my name in the Spotify search bar, spelled D-A-R-A-Y-U-S-S-E-T-H-N-A, and you'll be able to access the Cleveland Sports Show wherever you are, on the go, at home, doesn't matter. If you have Spotify, then you have the Cleveland Sports Show at your fingertips. And as I mentioned, NordoniaHills.News, I'm a YouTube page, NordoniaHills.News YouTube page, is another place you can access all my episodes of the Cleveland Sports Show. And if you just go if you go there, you'll see all the episodes in order. We just finished episode 100, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you so much for joining me on that. So you have multiple ways to access the Cleveland Sports Show. I'm so happy you had a chance to join me this week. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a terrific weekend. And before I go, once again, I would just like to thank uh, uh, Mrs. Julie D'Aloiso as well as Maria D'Aloiso for getting these shows posted on NordoniaHills.News. And it's been a pleasure uh, working with uh, Julie for these last uh, two and a half, almost three years now. It it really has been uh, been awesome um, just going into all the podcasts and being able to do them. And we're finally at number 100. Um, this is a huge accomplishment um, you know, from this small studio, I started out with Brady Hamilton, you know, to uh, doing a few episodes um, Well, with Andrew Thompson. You guys uh, might remember him, some of you old timers of the Cleveland Sports Show. And then now with Logan, it's just been awesome. And this journey really has been terrific. But the journey is not over. We still have sports to talk about. Logan and I will get to you next week with what is going on. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you would enjoyed episode, um, yes, that's true, 100 of the Cleveland Sports Show. We made it to 100 episodes. Um, very proud of this. Thank you guys so much for all of your support throughout the years. It's really been uh, terrific, and I enjoy doing this every week for you guys. Have a wonderful weekend, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you tune into NBA All-Star Weekend and uh, watch the All-Star Game, the three-point contest, the skills challenge, the dunk contest, obviously. We'll see you next week for more analysis on for more analysis on sports. Until then, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for your time and take care.